Are you putting food on your face? This is a public service announcement for anyone who is putting food on their face. It's something that I see all too often, and this video was actually inspired by a recent client of mine who consistently used food face masks on her skin for around two months. Stay tuned to hear what happened to her skin. You don't want to miss this. You've heard me talking about face masks. You've heard me talking about the worst things you could ever put on your face. And some of those things do include food, right? I mentioned those things. In this video, I am combining the two, right? I'm combining face masks and food into one video. And I'm gonna let you know what food will actually do to your face. So let me start by sharing a story of my client. Most of her masks were actually yogurt based with uh, the addition of baking soda, sometimes lemon, sometimes honey, sometimes other foods. And she was doing this for two months. Consistently, she was applying food to her face. Something started to develop. Like not only was her skin starting to get more and more sensitized, which will happen, but she also started developing a growth on her skin. So sometimes it would be on one area of her face, sometimes on another, on her nose, on her chin. And when I finally met her, I saw it on the chin. It was a, like a, a growth, something living on the skin that looked kind of like acne, but it had roots and it would just grow on one area of the face. Like it had actual roots in the skin. So anytime she popped it or tried to get rid of it, it would have like deep roots inside the actual skin. Um, kind of like, you know, you imagine an octopus with legs, but inside your skin. And then if you get rid of the top of the octopus, the legs are still there and then the octopus grows back. I know this is a weird visual to give you, but I'm trying to kind of make it really clear as to what was growing on her skin. And so finally, after speaking to a doctor, she got a antifungal cream for her skin, started applying it, and the growth started finally going away. So the combination of stopping putting food on her face and the antifungal was able to clear up this particular fungal infection that was growing on her face as a result of the food. The worst part about this scenario though was the mark that it left behind. It wasn't like regular, you know, acne or even malassezia folliculitis where it leaves behind some maybe pitted scars or something along those lines. Here it left a valley. I am here as kind of a public service announcement to anyone out there considering putting food on your face. Uh, I almost feel a little silly saying this, but unfortunately it's just something I think due to, you know, maybe YouTube, <laughs> maybe Instagram, uh, it's just the thing that just won't stop, it seems, you know? And I understand, I understand the confusion because uh, we think of food as nutritious, right? Because our body uses those nutrients in our guts, right? in our stomach, in our guts. We absorb what our body needs from the food and we benefit from it. We get energy to thrive as a result of putting food in our mouths. And similarly, I think that that logic was taken from you know how food works in the stomach to how food might benefit us when applied topically on the skin. And these two things are totally unrelated. I mean, your stomach has to actually dissolve the food with hydrochloric acid and then your intestines have to absorb those nutrients from that, right? Like it's a complex process that has to happen in order for your body to be able to convert the food into useful things that it can actually use. And on the surface of the skin, you don't have something to digest that food. But what you do have is bacteria, fungus, mites, all kinds of things, yeast living on your skin. And this is normal, we have a microbiome on our skin that doesn't need to be fed with food. And similarly, oils feed a yeast on our skin called malassezia. I'm not sure what yeast this was in particular. It could have been a strain because there's many different kinds of malassezia. It could have been a strain of malassezia or something totally different. I'm definitely not like a yeast uh, expert in terms of, oh, this one likes this food and this one likes this food. But in general, putting food on your face can result in something as simple as just contact dermatitis, right? Like a rash, irritation, inflammation of the skin. But in the long run, you can cause quite 
the imbalance on the surface of your skin leading to fungal yeast overgrowths, etc. So it, you really, you really have to be mindful with the things that you put on your skin. It needs to be well formulated in the lab, tested for safety. Food doesn't have any of that, right? Because its purpose is ingestion, not topical application. And so I'll just throw out a few examples of certain foods that people do use on their face and that are recommended even around here on YouTube, right? Just in case it's something that you practice and that you stop practicing. But again, like I'm gonna put the blanket statement out there, all food doesn't belong on your face. So please stop putting all foods on your face. All of them, no exception, just don't put food on your face, please. An example, of course, is yogurt, yogurt masks. People say, oh, it has lactic acid in it. You can simply get lactic acid without anything else that is in the yogurt clogging and irritating and potentially feeding yeasts on your skin, right? You can get the necessary constituent that maybe yogurt has in just a well-formulated lactic acid containing product that won't have any of the other irritants in the yogurt for your skin. You're gonna have to read ingredients and do some research obviously so that you don't find, you know, irritating skin stuff as I like to call it. Because me, I like to delineate between skincare, beneficial stuff for your skin, and skin stuff, useless or damaging stuff for your skin, right? So that's when we still have to be careful and choose well-formulated products. But I'm just saying that you can get what's inside the yogurt without using the yogurt on your skin. Another popular food for the face is honey, right? It's touted as being a humectant, antibacterial, blah, blah, blah. What it will do <laughs> is it will irritate your skin um, and it will cause clogging. I found in my personal experience, honey always clogged my skin, but I didn't make the connection because clogging takes time, right? And so I, I thought honey was innocent, natural, yummy, right? So couldn't do any harm for my skin, but ultimately my skin hated honey, like it hated honey. And actually it was my honey experiment that led me to experiment with other natural skincare that led me to create adult acne, as people call it, as in, you know, the worst skin of my life as an adult. That's what I did by, you know, experimenting actual with actual foods and later oils on my skin. So I have personal experience with this, but also I have seen so many of my clients have had similar experiences where, I mean, this recent example was one of the most extreme that I've seen in terms of consistency with food on the face, right? Often it's just something that people do once a week, once in a while. Again, you get no benefits. But if you do it consistently enough, that's when you don't see any of the benefits, but that's when you actually see the accumulated damage as a result of using foods on your face consistently. You've heard me talking about this before, but I mentioned baking soda and lemon and baking soda is just too alkaline and makes your skin vulnerable to bacteria orgies on your skin, essentially. And uh, lemon is too acidic, which makes your skin super vulnerable and dehydrated once again. It's just not a good thing for your skin, plus it can sensitize your skin to the sun, causing sometimes blisters even on the skin. So the combination of uh, citric acid and sunlight can cause extreme reactions on the skin and so it's not a good idea to combine those two or just you know put high amounts of citric acid on your skin you don't want lemons on your skin and similarly this applies of course to apple cider vinegar which is also too acidic for your skin and is another food that is commonly used in the acne community as a means to chemically exfoliate the skin but apple cider vinegar if anything would contain malic acid which is an alpha hydroxy acid which means that it is a water soluble acid which means that it cannot penetrate the pore and unclog it, resurface its lining, because again, it's fat soluble and your pores are full of fat. All that you're doing, if anything, is causing irritation. Uh, while just really, really superficially exfoliating the skin. Like it's very superficial. It doesn't go inside the pore. Once again, it doesn't help with clogging. So it's not very useful and causes long-term damage of, of the skin if you're gonna do this consistently. And I've seen some acne coaches actually uh, in their communities recommend using apple cider vinegar toners and or hydrosol sprays, etc. And all these things only lead to irritation. Nobody gets clear skin with this stuff. Um, I'm sorry, it's just, this is what I've seen. I can't ignore, you know, the experience of hundreds now of people 
food on your face is just not beneficial. Products need to be formulated in the lab for safety. This is really, really, really important. We don't want to put just anything on our skin. And to me, I feel like I had to make this video as basically an advocate for your skin because your skin, you know, doesn't have a voice. And so today I want to speak on behalf of your skin. So as your skin, I just wanna ask you to be kinder to me, to appreciate me, to give me the respect that I deserve. I don't deserve food on me. I would really, really prefer it if you used really gentle products and didn't assault me with things that I simply cannot use and that I don't benefit from. Thank you so much with love, your skin. So, you know, it's really unfortunate that our face, our facial skin, seems to be the area on which we experiment the most. With the rest of our bodies, I think we're much gentler, much kinder and less experimental, right? And we're less prone to following, you know, weird advice on the internet and then applying that weird advice to our skin on the body rather than our facial skin. I don't know why our facial skin gets such aggression from us maybe it's because it's what we you know put out to the world and it's what people see and so maybe we feel a lot of pressure to do our best taking care of our facial skin and again the way the best way to do that is with gentle well formulated products in a consistently good skincare routine this will get you the results that you want without the damage because we don't want to try to solve a problem while creating another problem in its place we want to with a gentle approach lower inflammation on the skin lower incidence of irritation so that the skin becomes less and less reactive and more and more calm so we can train our skin over time time to become extremely aggressive and extremely inflamed by using you know terribly formulated things but also at the same time and there's the good news we can train our skin to become less and less reactive and less and less inflamed thereby normalizing itself and being healthy again your skin wants to be healthy it wants to heal but we have to remove those obstacles in its way Again, those obstacles would be food on the face. <laughs> and there's no judgment here if you put food on your face. I too put food on my face. This is why I've learned right from my mistakes. And often the things that I discuss on this channel are things I've actually done myself, right? Like I don't say like, oh, you suck. You did this. I did it too. That's the nature of life, right? Um, but I've made so many of these mistakes myself throughout the years that I've, you know, learned from them. And so I want to share what I've learned with you guys so that you don't make the same mistakes that I once made, okay? We all deserve amazing skin and that's what our skin wants to be, is amazing. So once we eliminate some of these unhelpful habits or practices, you know, our skin can actually be what it's meant to be. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, especially those friends that may be putting food on their face, and watch another video. I hope to see you in the next one. <laughs>